Um, moving right along in our parsha, chapter three, verse forty. And by midbar, by Yomer Adonai al Moshe, pekod kol b'chor zachar of Nei Yisrael miben chodesh v'mara v'sas mispar shemosam. So we have, we saw yesterday, we had the number of Levites was um, twenty-two thousand. So now we need to transfer the firstborns onto the Levites. So God says to Moshe, count the firstborn, every male from one month up and take a census of their names. So what does Rashi say here? Once they left from one month, they're no longer Nephilim. Nephilim are, we're not sure if they're going to live. So take the Levites from me, Tachatz Kol Bachor B'Vnei Yisrael, in place of all the firstborns. Behemas Halavim Tachatz Kol Bachor B'Behemas B'Vnei Yisrael. Take the animals of the Levites, in place of all the firstborns, and the Behemas of B'Vnei Yisrael. By Efkon Moshe Kasher Tziva Hashem Oto, and Moshe counted just like Hashem commanded him. It's called Bechor B'vnei Yisrael, all the firstborn of the children of Israel. And all the firstborn males were Shnaimas from Elav Shloshim Shivim Masayim. So all the firstborn males counted up to 22,273. So there are 273 more firstborns than Levites. So we have an issue. How are we going to redeem those firstborns? Transfer them onto the Levites. So take every Levite in place of each before. Take the animals of the Levites corresponding to their animals. And the Levites will be for me. By the way, we don't know that the Levites had the same number of animals as the firstborns. Let's see what Rashi says. Behemas alavim, lo padu behemas alavim as bechori behemat Torah shal Yisrael. The animals of the Levites did not redeem the firstborn animals, elas pitrecha morehem, but they redeemed their donkeys. Visa echad shall ben levi, one sheep of a levi patar kama pitrecha morim shal Yisrael. We redeemed many donkeys, firstborn donkeys of the Israel. That's why we have to count the extra humans amongst the firstborn, but not the extra humans amongst, not the extra animals. Because you take one Levi lamb and it'll redeem or the, all the firstborn donkeys of the firstborn. Yeah. So now we go up to verse 46. And the Firstborn and the redemption of those 273 firstborn that are excess over the Levites and the firstborns. The, the, okay. And you shall take five. Okay, wait, did I skip a Rashi? Yes. And you're going to redeem the 273 firstborn who are over the Levites. Rashi says, so how many firstborns you need to redeem by him? That's the Il Ashlosha Bashivim These are 273. How would fin by him or excess above the Levites, the Sarah Malavim? Mayhem Tika, from then you shall take Hamesha Shkalma Gogolas, five shkalm for each head. Kiaisam Khiraso Shal Yosef. That was the sale of Joseph. As from Kesef, Shahaya Bechoro Shal Rachel, as he was, and he was the firstborn of Rachel. So let's understand what Rashi is telling us. Now, from each of these firstborn, you're supposed to take five shekels, and the shekel is twenty gera. So from each for for each firstborn, well, so you're going to have to take five shekels. So. And from each one of these 273 firstborn, you're going to have to take five shkalim, which equals the 20 gera, which Joseph was sold for. 
And he was the firstborn. So what does this have to do? Why are we taking the five shkalim from the firstborn? How does that make an atonement for Joseph? He was the firstborn. I don't understand. You're supposed to take five shkalim according to the head count in the shekel. The shekel is 20 gera. I don't understand the... Uh, What's the connection? To Joseph, well, Joseph was the firstborn, and they took twenty shekel. Twenty gera. Tw no, twenty gera, which is five shekel. Yeah, Judy, you're trying to say something. No, I was cut off. Talking back on. Okay, 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 okay. Welcome back. The rabbi so, called me. Okay, well, we we welcome you back. So, um, uh, I don't understand it. Okay. Okay, fine. What's the connection? What does it say on the bottom? What is uh, what does Rabbi Shantel say? He says the geiras uh, is a, is ten geiras, a regular shekel, and then twenty is equal to like a sacred shekel, whatever that okay, is. Okay, but does he connect it to Joseph no, at all? He doesn't say anything about Joseph. Okay, I don't understand what Rashi was saying. Yet. Okay, fine. Vinasata kesef Aaron Obanov, and then you give Rabbi, the money. They, they sold. They sold Yosef for 20 pieces of silver. Right, that's 20 gera, fine. Let's just no, assume it's the same. No, Let's 20 just... gera is, is, is in one shekel. 20 kesef, assumably, is 20 shekels. Rashi says here, let's, let's stipulate that Rashi's explanation here is the, is the one we're going to go with, which is that the five shkolim per head is equal to the 20 pieces of silver. That what Joseph was sold for, fine. And can't be because a stream gera is one shekel. But but he's okay. It would be a hundred, not not twenty. Yeah, but Joseph was sold here according to the midrash. Joseph was sold for twenty dinars. There are four dinars to a shekel, so Joseph was sold for five shkolim. That's what uh, commentary says. But what does this have to do with Joseph? Okay, anyway, so Joseph also. So basically, they're paying back because Joseph was sold for this amount of money. So, but the firstborn didn't sin with the sale of Joseph. What was their sin? But anyway, you shall give the money to Aaron and his children. Those redeemed in excess among them. So, okay. No, not yet. Vayikach Moshe has kesef apijom. And Moshe took the uh, the money of the redemption from those who were in excess. Al Money took the money that was Moshe took the money that was extra from Meisa Okay, verse fifty. Vayikach Moshe Kesef Apidyom Meisa Bechor Ben Israel Lakachas Akesef. Okay, Rashi says the Otfim, the ones were extra over the, the Levites, and Osan Shapadul of him, over those whom the Levites redeemed, Begufan through their bodies. Verse 50. Me Ace Bechor Bene Israel, from the firstborn of Israel, Akachas Akasef, he took the money, Chamishavashishim Shlosh Meos by Alf Beshekla Kodesh. So from the firstborn of Israel, he took the money, 1,365 in the sacred Shkohan. So if you take five, and you times it by 273, what are you going to get to? If you take five times it by 273, what are you gonna get? Presumably you'll get, <coughs> presumably you'll get this amount. Rashi says it. This is the calculation. Five shkalm per head. So for 200, that's 1,000. With Shivan Bechoros, Shalosh Meos, that's 300. And for seven, for, and that's, that's 350. And with Shalosh Bechoros, Chamisha Asar, 
So therefore, you're going to get 1,365. Fine. And Amar, Kate said, and Moshe said, what should I do? Bechor Sha'omar, well, firstborn to whom I say, Tain Chamesha Shkolem, he'll say, he'll say, Yomar, he'll say to me, Ani mi p'tuye elavim. None of the firstborn will want to pay the five Shkolem. Each one will say, I don't want to be the one to pay it. You should be the one to pay it. Masa, what did he do? He bishnayim has from Elf Pitkin. So Moshe brought 22,000 notes. I mean, can you imagine how long that would take to take 22,000 lottery cards? And upon them, he wrote, because of Elam Ben Levi, upon them, he wrote Levite. And then he took 273, and because of Elam Chamisha Shkolem. If you draw, if you got the, if you got the, the lottery card that says five shkolem, you'd have to pay a call on. He mixed them up, nas, nas, son of a coffee, put them in the box. Amaram, he said to them, Bo, tlu, pis, come enjoy your tickets, Mafia Goral, according to the lottery. You know, I would have thought a, a better way to do it would say that each Levite would have to pay like some small amount that equals the equals this amount, rather than saying that the 273 all have to pay five and the 22,000 have to pay nothing. It doesn't seem to be a fair distribution of the money. But of course, the Torah tells us what's the right way to do it. And this is what the Torah says. Is there any indication that those 273 were sinners? No. So, so first they collected all the money from, from the first one, right? For, no, this has nothing to do with any collection before. We have 200. We're giving the first the Levites the, the rights of being the serving in the temple. We're taking those rights away from the firstborn. So the so therefore there's but they're, they're, we're transferring it. But there's 273 extra firstborn, and they need to be redeemed. They need to redeem themselves because they're not just being transferred to the Levites. So the 273 of them have to give the five shkolim. So how, how did they pick out which give the five shkolim? They took a lottery. Right, and so God spoke to Moshe and Aaron saying, Now, so as Rosh B'nai Kahas, uh, count the, the children of Kahas, Mitoch B'nai Levi, Mishpachosam and Beisavasam, count the heads of Kahas from the children of Levi according to their families. What does this mean? Rashi says, Minamehem. Take a census amongst them, those who are fit for the work of carrying, because the cows did the carrying. And who was the one who did, was fit for carrying? Miben Shloshim Ben From 30 to 50 years age, they're supposed to do the carrying. So, if you're less than 30, you're not fully developed. We kind of move from here. They said, Ben Shloshim with Koach, 30 years old for strength. By Yosar Ben Chamishim, and one who's more than 50, Kocho Machich Miyata, his strength diminishes from then on. That's what Rashi says. You, you want to argue with Rashi? Unless you're LeBron James, your strength diminishes after 50. And even LeBron James, it's probably going to diminish. Unless your name is Tom Brady and LeBron James, you're pretty much going down a little by little from the oh, age. Yeah, even before 50, you go down. It seems like a little arbitrary, <coughs> but I guess it's imperceptible until you're 50. And and now we have Jerry Sheckman, who is, I think, 98. Jerry, yes. 98. Uh, Jerry, are you, are you 98 yes. or 99? 98. 98, uh, okay. We, uh, we be, uh, from the moment of birth on, we begin our deaths process our, our the death process well it's hard to argue with that statement that life is a terminal illness but still uh, jerry you're um you get stronger and stronger before you get weaker and weaker and so the talmud is saying that your apex time your prime as a levite at least is from 30 to 50. uh but currently uh, in 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 the year twenty twenty three, uh, that those figures don't hold. Uh, I think um, the greatest strength is in the twenties of uh, young men and women. That's an interesting question. So, what you're asking is today, 
if we can prove that the greatest strength is in the 20s, when we move it from 30 to 20. But the Torah didn't say the reason. Rashi is giving the reason. And, and, and with longer lifespans, 50 is the important. Yeah, it could be, but Rashi doesn't, Rashi gives a reason, and I don't know, it's an interesting point whether or not we would apply this in this in, uh, way today. It seems to be like it's a, it's a commandment from the Torah from 30 to 50, irrespective of whether or not people today over 50 are really fit or people under 30 are also really fit. Torah is taking the baseline that most people's, most of the Levites' primes <laughs> Clearly, obviously, back then, for service in the army, it was age 20. So clearly, they understood. But I think maybe what Rashi meant was that from 30 to 50, that's your prime professional life because they're more responsible. The 20-year-old might show up late, might not be as committed, as responsible as a 30-year-old. Okay, but it's a very good point, Jerry. Okay. Your explanation is very good. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that, Jerry. Okay, and then it states be Ben Shloshim Shana Vamala from 30 years old, older, Bad Ben Hamishim Shana until 50, called Balat Saval Asoma Chabal Moed. All everyone there comes to perform work. Zos Avodas Ben Ekas, this is the work of the Kahas family, but O Moed, Kodesh Kodeshim, in the O Moed in the Holy of Holies. Ka Was it Kahas? Was it Korach from Korach? Korach? Hello, John. How are you doing? Yeah, so let's see. Uh, she told us. So here we go. So he was definitely from the tribe. Yes, Korach was from Kahas. But he called Korach from Yitzhar ben Kahas ben Levi. So this is what the job of the Kahas family was. Hello, John. How are you doing, my dear friend? And Desmond, everybody's here studying Torah today. So he says, John, would you like some pea soup? We have vegetarian pea soup, if you'd like. Where, what page are we on, Seth? Uh, 747. 747. 747. Okay. Kodesh Kodeshim Hamukdash So the Levite's job was to do the Holy of Holies, which was the most holy of them all. Haaron Lashokhan. Menorah. Their job was to carry the, the temple, the ark, the table, and the menorah, the altars and the partitions, and the, and the, uh, the, the vessels that were used. So here, Rashi is telling us that, because usually the Kodesh Kodashim, when it says they can, their job is to carry the Holy of Holies, Usually it means the Holy of Holies, but it can't be that's what it means here because, because, because it refers to the Mishkan after it was torn apart. And then there's no Holy of Holies anymore. And it can't mean what was in the Holy of Holies because the Aron was the only thing that was in the Holy of Holies. And they also carry the other parts which were not in the Holy of Holies. So therefore Rashi is saying what it means is the most uh, the most holy, Amukdash Shabakuan. They carried the holiest of the objects. Uva Aaron Uvana were in verse five. Uva Aaron Uvana ben Soa Machana. And Aaron and his sons came when the when the camp traveled. Vaurido es parochas amasach. They took down the partition. Vachisuba es Aaron Aidus. And they covered with it the Aaron. Uh, she says, Va Aaron Uvana, Yachnisu ko kui kui. They put every implement into the container stated for it. And the Levites, the sons of God, will not do anything except to carry it. When the camp journeys, then the cloud, when the cloud moves away, they know that they should journey. So this is what they're carrying. They shall place upon these things when they carry them, these holy utensils. Place upon the tachash covering, and they set on top of it techelas, and then they put it on poles. So the, the techelas was used to cover. 
It's a very powerful idea that they're covering these utensils with holy, holy things when they move. Rashi says, Karos, Kapos, Kisos, Minakios. And we're not up to that, Rashi. And on the Shulchan Panim, and on the table of the Panim, the Lechem Panim, the bread, Yifrasu Beget Techeles, they shall spread out the garments of Techeles, Minasnu Olav, and they shall place upon it Karos, Kapos, they put upon it the, the plates, the spoons, Minakios. And that's the uh, supports, that's kisos hanosach, the covering tubes, v'lechem atamid alaviyah, and the lechem atamid. Rashi says, k'far pri Rashi b'malachas hamishkan, already described it. And I feel like that's when you say, oh, we already discussed this issue, even though there was, I didn't understand that the first time Rashi described these, in, in, in these utensils. Hanosach means, the hanosach means the kis, or the covering. Masach. So why is a techeles used to cover the utensils? Why are we using the holiest of the objects, the techeles? So the techeles represents, sometimes there's a cover over our spirituality and to really get to the bottom of it, even though the cover is holy, to get to the bottom of it, you have to drill through the cover to get to the next level when it comes to spirituality. And they shall spread over them a garment of scarlet wool. Yes, Jerry. Jerry, you had a question? Yes. Uh, the the Tehelas represents royal blue. Uh, the, the, the kings in, in the ancient world loved this color, of, uh, and they would uh, dye their garments with, uh, with purple. Is it blue or purple? So there is a dispute about exactly what color is it, Trelas, but yeah, it was the color associated with royalty and also with Aaron and his service. So that's why Korach wanted to say that they, one of the questions Korach brought was to say, can you make your, if you make your whole garment out of Trelas, will you still be required to wear tzitzis on it? That was the question of Korach. You know, the Trelas to me, is one of the examples of the living Torah because the trelas were for for 1500 years nobody wore trelas nobody um nobody knew what it was nobody knew what the trelas was they didn't they didn't understand what the trelas was but then the Regina Rebbe argued it's all mystery about the trelas the Regina Rebbe argued that he found the trelas but really he was just hoodwinked by the uh, by the Gentiles who, who told them that this was from a fish in the sea, but really it was just the ink. But then recently in Israel, uh, then there was discovery made of trelas and the people who were so active involved with it were, uh, were these Ari Greenspan and Ari Zivotovsky, they were so active in, in discovering the trelas and finding it on the beach. And I wanna tell you something, the snails, and that's why I wear trelas, of course, and I encourage everybody to do it. If you, you can buy the strings and you can ask one of my boys and they'll attach it for you. They know how to pull the string. It's a big mitzvah to do, to wear the trelas. And, and Zivotovsky, such a tzaddik, he's the one who advised me on how we can go to Har Sinai in Saudi Arabia because he went first. But he, he didn't go to Jebel Harb, he, but he told me to go. He only went to Jebel Laos and Jebel Mekla, but he didn't go to Jebel Harb. But, yeah, that was Zivotovsky. He showed it to me. All right, very good point, Jerry. And we'll stop here at the Davin Mincha. Any questions?